Christ. Your presence is mighty here. We ask that everyone be touched. We ask that a wall of fire surrounds everyone and their entire household. Lord, send your word with power. For all you do, I vow to return the glory. Grant us unusual speed in concluding the task for this day. For all you do, I vow, all the glory shall be returned to you. In Jesus' precious name. If you are glad you are part of the church of Christ, give the Lord a big hand and please be seated. Thank you, Lord. This is our covenant family day. And in the name of Jesus, no more evil occurrence in your household in the name of Jesus. Before we get there to that section of today's teaching, we are going to continue considering the topic, understanding the wonders of thanksgiving. Understanding the wonders. It is packaged with wonders. But very importantly, as we lay foundation for all of the services today, it's important you and I understand that kingdom mysteries are wrapped in kingdom simplicities. Kingdom mysteries are wrapped in kingdom simplicities. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 3, he said, But lest I feared lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his simplicity, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. As the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your minds be corrupted from the simplicity which is in Christ. Hear this and hear it well. To beguile means to deceive. Subtlety there means craftiness. So the devil is crafty in making us refuse simplicity that dissolves complexity. It is so simple, yet it has capacity to dissolve every hard issue. But the devil says, no, if it is complex, the solution too must be complex. But hear this and hear it well, in the kingdom of this world, we celebrate complexities. But in the kingdom of God, we celebrate simplicity. John 2, 5, whatever it tells you to do, which will usually be so simple, do it. The simplicity, therefore, of the mystery of thanksgiving is what gives us mastery over the complexities of life. Life can be complex, but we can gain mastery over complexities by embracing simplicities. Hear this and hear it. When the Lord opened my eyes, I was shocked. But there are three very complex situations that every generation goes through. Number one, sickness. Number two, hunger. Number three, the last enemy, death. But all these three major complexities, according to scriptures, were dissolved by the simplicity of thanksgiving. Let's take them one by one. Sickness. Luke chapter 17, verse 17 to 19. Ah, hear this. He said, were they not ten cleansed? We are the nine. They are not found that returned to give glory to God. Except this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way. Thy faith has brought you complete wholeness. From complex leprosy. He gained complete wholeness by thanksgiving. Hunger, another enemy. John chapter 6, verse 6 down to 11. They follow Jesus hungry. You never know how complex hunger is until hungry people follow you and you must supply their bread. And Jesus lifted it up and said, Father, I 
thank you. And hunger was taken care of with excess. They had baskets left from what was insufficient. Now, what of death? John chapter 11, verse 40 to 44. This simple mystery gained mastery over death. Have I not said to you that if you will believe, you will see the glory of God? 41. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And he lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I what? Let me hear you in the first service. Father, I do what? I Shout it loud like you are catching something. I Father, I thank you. And he that was dead. Ha. Ay, 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 ay. He that was dead. Now you look at these three scenarios. Thanksgiving and dead sickness. Thanksgiving and dead hunger. And Thanksgiving and dead death. No matter what you are going through. Ah. Thanksgiving is the answer. Hallelujah. Therefore, wherever you are in this first service, without apology, I'd like you to lift up your hands and shout it with rugged confidence. <laughs> Father, thank you. <laughs> ay, 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 ay. Let me hear you if you are gaining understanding. <laughs> Father, I thank you. The world will keep celebrating complexities, but we are celebrating simplicity. Hear this and hear it well. Everything this year can turn around by this mystery. It doesn't matter what you are going through. It doesn't matter what you are in right now. It doesn't matter what is staring you in the face saying I'm coming. If you will lift up your hand with understanding, it will dissolve it. Therefore, with a loud voice, say with me, Father, thank you. Father, thank you. Louder. Father, you. Louder. Father, you. Louder. Father, you. Louder. Father, you. Louder. Are you seeing what I'm seeing at all? Yes. Now hear this and listen to it well. The mystery of thanksgiving. Ayakrush katali abala. It gets a man involved with God. And God involved with the man. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. The mystery of thanksgiving gets a man involved with God. And God involved with a man. Why will I say so? Psalm 92, we have been reading it before. Verse 1 and 2. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praise unto his name, O Most High. Verse 2. To show for thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night. Now jump to verse 10. Verse 10 if you have it. Verse 10. But my horn. You see, the man is the one who begins the process. But God steps in in the midst of the process. But my horn shall thou exalt. You will personally be involved with me because I have gotten involved with you. Mm. But my horn shall thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. That is, thanksgiving gets you involved with God and God involved with you. And hear this. These three statements will blow your mind to the next level. When God is involved, wonders evolve. Exodus 15 and verse 11. Who is like unto thee, O Lord? Who is like unto thee? For you are glorious in holiness fearful in praises and let me hear you in the first service shout the last part one to go doing what doing what let me hear you louder doing what wonders that's why i said when god is involved wonders evolve also note that when God is involved, oh my God, mountains dissolve. Yes. There is no mountain. In fact, the scripture tells us, tremble thou earth. Why are you skipping like a ram? He said, tremble O earth at the presence of God. So mountains are dissolved. Mark eleven twenty three. You shall say to this mountain. Say doesn't just mean prayer. In fact, this is a new light. You shall say. You shall say. What are you doing in Thanksgiving? You are saying. Ah. You shall say to this mountain. Be thou removed. The only reason it will be removed is because God is involved. 
The only reason it will be dissolved is because God is involved. And so when they shouted and got God involved, I think that's in Joshua chapter 6 verse 20, 21 or so. The mountain, the, the wall came down flat. In other words, the wall dissolved. When God is involved, mountains dissolve. Are you ready for the third one? When God is involved, difficulties are resolved. I'm not telling you what I read in any book. So you better write it. Hear this and hear it well. There is nothing that will not be resolved when God is involved. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 20 to 24, in fact from verse 3, they were stranded and did not know what to do. God said, thanksgiving praise is what to do. And they began to do it and as he got involved, the difficulty was resolved. He took care of it. They helped to kill themselves while the children of God watched. When God is involved, wonders evolve. When God is involved, mountains dissolve. When God is involved, difficulties are resolved. Will you involve God? Yes. Ay, 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 ay. Will you involve God? Yes. Thanksgiving is how to involve him. Thanksgiving is how to involve him. Thanksgiving is how to involve him. Now, what is thanksgiving for the purpose of first service? Take this one definition. Thanksgiving is a celebration of the acts of God in our lives. Do you know whether you know it or not? God is working in your life. But not everybody celebrates him. Do you know there is a difference with one person that wakes up alive and another that wakes up alive? The difference is their attitude. Somebody will get up and as soon as his leg touches the ground, he begins to dance. Ah, Lord, is this me? Do you know people are not just killed by accident? People are killed in sleep. People disappear in sleep. So the first miracle today in your life is that you are alive. Now, you can either celebrate God for life or complain and complicate your life the choice is yours a celebration of the acts of god is a good thing to give thanks unto the lord and to sing praises unto thy name O most high ah, i will bless the lord at all times his praises shall continually be in my mouth uh, look at verse 2. Let's keep reading to verse 3. Please place verse 2 on the screen. Psalm 34 verse 2. My soul ah, shall make a boast. Ah, this is not an ordinary thing. I will go around boasting of my God. That's why when you are ready to thank God, don't bother about how your neighbor feels. Your neighbor is not your God. Don't bother about how your pastor feels. Your pastor is also subjected to God. I will bless the Lord and I will boast. I will boast. Go out this week and boast in God. Ah. Now, how many of you were not in the ICU throughout COVID? Anybody like that? You didn't enter the ICU throughout COVID. Go around and boast. Boast in your God. That look, COVID came. COVID left and COVID returned and COVID is living and COVID may still come again but it has never forever forever ever ever it has never forever forever ever ever taken me to the hospital it has never taken my life away somebody celebrate and shout thank you Jesus the loudest you can thank you Jesus my soul will make her boast. This is now a mystery. Place verse 2 on the screen. Because those who boast in the law are humble. <laughs> Isn't God amazing? Those who boast in God are humble. He said the humble will hear it thereof and be glad. So those who boast in God are humble. Those who don't boast in God are proud. 
That's a mystery. To be cracked in another service. My soul will make a boast. Now, oh, magnify. Hi, 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 hi. Magnify. That is, never claim anything is small. In fact, what the world thinks is small, magnify. Make it big. Somebody is saying, what will I thank God for for life? Go about celebrating life that those who are alive and haven't celebrated God are guilty. Make your boast in the Lord. Celebrate him. Now, hear this. The fact that you are still in your right mind deserves enough celebration. The fact that things are still working, even though not yet working as you think they should work, deserves enough celebration. Now in this first service, I'd like us to do it in a way that heaven will take note. Will you jump on your feet and shout, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The loudest you can, thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Take your seat if you can. God deserves our celebration. God demands our celebration. And God desires our celebration. I don't know about you, but I feel guilty that I have not done it enough. I feel guilty that I am preaching when I should be dancing. I feel guilty. I can't tell how many times Kobe touched but couldn't remain. I can't tell how many battles were won on my behalf in my sleep without my knowledge. I can't tell how many accidents were averted without my knowing. I cannot tell how many arrows were shot that returned back on the head of the sender. But I am here today in the land of the living. And if you can, you will jump on your feet and shout, thank you, Jesus. The loudest you can, thank you, Jesus. Take your seat. Let everything that has breath. Psalm 150 verse 6. So God deserves our celebration because we have breath. God demands our celebration. He said, this commandment is to you, O ye priest. If you will not lay it to heart to give glory to my name. He said, I will even send a call. Somebody shout God for me. So it is deserved. It is demanded. And it is desired. I will bless the Lord. At how many times? He wants it at all times. Don't tell me it is a month of prayer so you won't thank him. Don't tell me it is a month of vision so you won't celebrate him. At all times. It is desired. Now please hear this as we quickly try to speed up. In our celebration is the invitation for his manifestation. In our celebration is the invitation for his manifestation. If you don't think you have seen enough manifestation, then engage in invitation. When you invite him with praise, with thanksgiving, he comes down to manifest. Exodus 15, 11. Who is like unto thee? Glorious in holiness. Fearful in praises. Invited to do wonders. So we can invite him by celebrating him. And when he arrives, it is manifestation time. So thanksgiving in a nutshell for the first service is a celebration of the acts of God in your life. I just heard the Holy Spirit now. Please listen. Acts of the apostles were the things that happened in the life of the apostles on behalf of the apostles among the apostles. Do you know you can write your own acts? Yes. The acts of Isaac Oedepo. Things that God has done for me, done through me, and is doing around me. That's acts. Celebrate his acts. And if you will succeed in celebrating his acts, hear this, then document the acts. Document the acts. Your assignment today is to go home and begin to write the chapter of the acts of your life. 
How God stepped in when you couldn't figure out a way. When everybody had given up on you, including you, on yourself. And then God showed up. Lift your hands and say, thank you, Jesus. What are we thanking God for? Number one, we are thanking him for his faithfulness in our lives. Lamentations chapter 3, 22 to 23. It's of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. Ah, because his compassion fails not. Do you know that the enemy has a consumption plan for everyone? But the consumption plan has been frustrated again and again, including last night. He said, they are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. So, we must thank him for his faithfulness. What more? Number two, what are we thanking God for? For keeping the anointing fresh upon our lives. We haven't expired. We are freshified. Day in, day out, new things, new light. And so we are thanking him for his anointing, the fresh oil over our lives. Psalm 89, verse 20 to verse 22. I have found David my servant. With my holy oil have I anointed him. And then you go down to Psalm chapter 92, verse 1 and 2, and then verse 10. My horn will thou exalt like the horn of the unicorn. Verse 10. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Fresh oil for fresh day. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. How many have been kept fresh by the Lord? For fresh oil. Lift up your hands and say thank you Jesus. What are the benefits of thanksgiving? Take one in this service. Thanksgiving, like we said last Sunday, engenders divine presence. Where we access the path of life. I'm going to show you something deep. <laughs> we access the path of life in his presence. And what is the path of life? The way out. The way forward. And the way upward. All right. So I believe that's Psalm 16 verse 11 or so. Or Psalm 16 verse 6. Thou will show me the path of life. For in thy presence. Huh? 11. Thou will show me the path of life. In thy presence. Ah. So the path of life cannot be discovered outside divine presence. Thou will show me the path of life. And then here we have simplicity mixed with complexity. So in his presence is the path of life. But you can't access his presence without joy. Are you seeing what I'm saying? Ah, because in thy presence is fullness of joy. Now when you are down, what do you need? The way up. When you are stagnated, what do you need? The way forward. And all this is found in his presence. When you are locked out, what do you need? The way in. You need the way out of where you are locked, where you are caged. Do you know there are some people caged? And I've been caged for years and can't find a way out. But I stand here to declare, if you will truly celebrate him today, the way out, the way forward, the way upward becomes your portion. Amen. A louder amen. amen. A stronger amen. amen. Can you now see how kingdom mysteries are packaged in kingdom simplicities? As simple as thanksgiving is, it is the way out, the way forward, and the way upward. If you receive his word, lift your hands and appreciate him where you are seated. Father, we give you the praise in Jesus' name. 
You are standing here today representing your family. And in the authority of the name of Jesus, no curse, no arrow, no pit will any of us or our family members ever be victims of. In Acts chapter 16 and verse 31, Acts chapter 16 verse 31, and they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shall be saved. Well, look at the last part. And thy house. Now let's try to quickly lay a foundation. By redemption, your lineage and my lineage has changed. Amen. Why? As many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God. So you are now a part of a new lineage. A new household. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 19. He said, now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and the household of God. Now be more conscious of your spiritual lineage or your spiritual background. That is the beginning of exemption. Be more conscious. Every generation I call spell enchantment associated with your biological lineage has no more hold over you. I must not hear members of this church saying from my father's house. It means you do not know your new father. Your father, father is the father in heaven. Not the one in a village. Not the one that brought you to this world. Daddy, I appreciate you. Mommy, I appreciate you. But my, my father or father is the king of kings and the lord of lords. Galatians chapter 3 verse 13 verse 14 and verse 29. Christ had redeemed us from the curse of the law. Be made a curse for us for it is written. Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree that the blessing of Abraham. Stop blaming your background. Your family background as the reason. Get off the ground because your heavenly father is not on the ground. He is not on the ground. Therefore hear this and hear it well. Because you have gotten off the ground, every other member of your family as well today, whatever cannot touch us, cannot touch you, will never be able to touch any extended or nuclear member of your family in the name of Jesus. Amen. I didn't hear the loudest amen. amen. A louder amen. amen. But if you look at Acts 16, 31, God is committed to saving us and our household. Noah, Abraham, Joseph, and Esther were all instrumental in saving their households. Please let's go back and walk on any member of our family that is still in the world. Anyone that is half leg in and half leg out, let's go and walk. He said you shall be saved and your house. And your house. And you discover that this is instrumental to having a wall of fire around your house. As long as the door remains closed. There is no room for the enemy to step in. But when you are, you are on fire and other members of your household are cold and look warm. There could be an attack through an open door. But in the name of Jesus Christ. On this covenant family day. I decree, not only you will be on fire, but every member of your household as well. Amen. I didn't hear the loudest amen. amen. Now, what do I do to secure the rescue of my family from every siege of wickedness? This first service will take four. Number one, pray for those that are yet to be saved among our family members to be saved. Hmm. 
Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 3. Let's take up their names in prayer. How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? Now, I believe the greatest blessing I got from my family, my earthly family, is not money. And many have been mistaken that I have a lot of money from, from inheritance. You are wasting your life. It's not money. I, I've been through stages where I had zero. Zero, zero, zero in the negative. Yet, I'm from a family that you would think he shouldn't have this happen to him. But the greatest thing I got from my family is salvation. Salvation. There is no room to be unsaved. The fire is too hot. It will, it, you will be drawn to the Lord from a little age. We began speaking in tongues, in other, in other tongues before 10, maybe before 8. Everyone knowing the Lord, please chart a course for your, don't tell me it is this generation. What nasty generation. Set them on fire. And the only way you can do it is if you too are on fire. So we must pray for the salvation of our household. I believe it is that prayer that kept me. There are many times I almost went off. But the prayer of my mother especially kept us together in the faith. Number two, we should plead for mercy. Lord, have mercy on my family. Because there is always a cause for a curse. Lord, have mercy. I may not even know what they have done, but I know you have mercy. Please have mercy upon my family. Because of this spell, some families have sold out their children before they even knew their name to serving other gods. Lord, have mercy. For the sorrow of them shall be multiplied that hasten after another God. Psalm 16 verse 4. Have mercy. Number three, we must become firebrands. We must become firebrands. Somebody shout fire. fire. Louder fire. fire. We must become firebrands and sustain the fire. Zechariah chapter 3 verse 1 and 2. He said, is this not a brand plucked out of fire? Now let me tell you something. When you are on fire, wood will become uncomfortable around you. So when you are on fire and people begin to depart, it is normal. Because they are wood. If you are fire and wood comes around, what happens? The wood is consumed. But if you are fire and gold comes around, what happens? The gold is refined. <laughs> it is impossible to be on fire and maintain your friends from last time. Because if they are not on fire, they become uncomfortable. This one is too much. This fire is too much. It is normal. Please depart. Gold will stay. Silver will stay. But wood will run. Fire. Zechariah chapter 2 verse 5 said, I will be a wall of fire. So if you will be a wall of fire and you are not fire yourself. That's dangerous. Therefore sustaining the fire around you will require sustaining the fire within you. You can't talk about sustaining the wall of fire around you without being firefied yourself. You need to be on fire for the fire around to be sustained. Therefore, hear this. Maybe I'll teach on this in the second service. It is dangerous in this kind of season to be cold. It is dangerous in this kind of season to be lukewarm. In fact, in the book of Revelations, it talks about the message to the seven churches. Refuse to be lukewarm. Living like the pandemic has not come in the midst of the pandemic is signing your death warrant. You must be on fire. It can't be as usual. I told one of my sons in the gospel, I said, hey, listen, I hear this well. When people tell you you have changed, tell them they are correct. Because the Bible says the part of the just is as a shining light that shines more and more. So there is change. Second Corinthians 3, 16 or 18. As we behold him as in a glass, we are what? So which Bible are you reading? If you are not changing, you are dying. 
When people tell you, Pastor, you, are, you have changed, you have changed. Yes, sir, I have changed. Get ready for more changes. Because that is the gospel. You can't keep fire without making consistent adjustments. So you must be on fire. If your heavenly father is a consuming fire, then you must be also a consuming fire. Or else you'll be consumed. Be on fire. Don't worry, we'll praise him after we close. As you're dancing to your cars. But we must finish this. If your father is a consuming fire, then the son and the daughter must also be consuming fires. Meaning when danger comes, it is consumed without you knowing. You get to a level where you can't tell what is burning around you because you're on fire yourself. Fire consuming another kind of fire cannot tell that there's anything happening. He's just moving. He's just progressing. And that's what will begin to happen in your life. Take number four as we prepare to close. Number four, we must enter into a covenant to serve God as individuals. They entered into a covenant to seek the Lord God of their fathers. And then he gave them rest round about. As for me and my house. <laughs> if I tell you what is it. There, you can't come to my house and say no. You were born as a man. Then you don't know if you are a man or a woman. Are you sick? <laughs> In my house? Me who saw you when you were born? You don't, you, hey, you don't have a choice. Choice of what? To decide what? Are you okay? Did you decide me as your father? Anytime you see any funny behavior, you say, hey, behave. Boys behave like boys. Are you here at all? Yes. Let's stand. Just stand. Even if, if you like, don't clap. Maybe it's you that God is talking to. Just stand. <laughs> Lift your hands now. Lord, that wall of fire sustain it around my household. So lift up your voice right now and begin to pray. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. This is not a quiet moment. That wall of fire must be sustained around me and my household. I refuse to be lukewarm. Somebody begin to declare, I refuse to be lukewarm. Father, thank you. In the name of Jesus. Lift your hands. I decree over your family, over my family, and over every family represented here today, an impregnable wall of fire around your household in the name of Jesus. And by you becoming on fire and sustaining the fire, the fire around your household will never go out. In the name of Jesus. All heads bowed and all eyes closed. We are talking of serious business. Things will not improve in this world. But in our kingdom, it's ever improving. As many as received him, to them gave he power. power. Just imagine a ticket is passed around right now. Every aisle, every row. If you don't have one, is it not wisdom to receive one? You pay nothing for it. It is free. And it is available. Wherever you are. You don't have a ticket to heaven. The flight is already approaching. And when the flight lands, it becomes too late to receive a ticket. I beg you wherever you are, put pride away. Put relevance away. And receive Jesus. I want to receive Jesus as my Lord. And my savior. I want to rededicate my life to him. Somebody is saying I want addictions broken over my life. I am trying but it's not happening. I want to be free. He who the son of man shall make free shall be free. Indeed. Lift up your hands. If that is you I'm talking about. 
you want to make a decision today, lift up your hands. Lift up your hands high above your head. Forget anybody around. This is you and your God. Can I ask you, quickly come out, let me pray one prayer for you. Your life will never forever remain the same. Just come out. You have your hands lifted up. Just make your way out. I like the hospitality to please help me so we can be as quick as possible. There is fire on the mountain. Something is happening in our day and in our age. Quickly come. Quickly come. Quickly come. Quickly come. Make your way. You raised up your hand. Nobody should beg you. You are saying, I want to be free. I want my ticket delivered to me for heaven. Do you know the trumpet will soon sound? We do not know if it is today. Wherever you are. There are seven people. I know it like I know my name. Quickly come out. Be sincere. Be honest. God bless you. Quickly come. I don't have a lot of time, but I think salvation is worth the time. Quickly make your way. Six more. Still deciding, should I come and somebody has left you? Somebody has already left you. You are still making a decision. Just face me, just face me. You are coming quickly, come, quickly, come. Those online as well, I'll be praying for you in just a moment. If you're online, please put up the information right now. Start filling your details and all of that. And then we'll be praying for you and praying with you in just a moment. Are you coming? I will count to five. Two. If you are coming, quickly come. Including from the overflows. Three. Quickly come. There are seven of you. And I know it. And somebody say, no, I won't go. It is left to you. It is a choice. Four. Five. If anybody is coming, you need to help me because as soon as we hit seven, we are praying. Six and seven. If you are coming, you better hurry up. Please place your right hand in your chest. Pray this very simple prayer of faith after me loud and clear. Say after me, Lord Jesus, forgive me all of my sins. Wash me in your blood. Make me a child of God. Jesus, today I confess that you are my Lord and my Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for I'm now born again. In Jesus' name, amen. Let me pray by Heavenly Father. Grace has found her and all those making this decision, let the same grace keep them serving you. On the final day when you shall return, none shall be missing. In Jesus' name. Open your eyes, it's a new day for you. Just look at this direction. Now, also, this is your first Sunday. Lift your hands where you are as one voice begins to get ready. As soon as we share the goodness, we switch over to 10 minutes of praise or so. This is your first Sunday. Just lift up your hands. We love you. We thank God for you. Lift up your hands. This is your first Sunday. Lift up your hands. Hands up. God bless you. Lift up your hands. Hospitality, please quickly help us. In the main auditorium and all the other overflows, this is your first time. I like the hospitality to quickly meet them and take them out. If I have any hands that I can see, I will call you out, but I can't see now. Okay. God bless you. Quickly come. Quickly come. God bless you. Hospitality, please bring them as quickly as possible. All first time worshipers, quickly come. Stretch forth your hands and let's begin to bless them and their families. It is no mistake that they are here for the first time on Covenant Family Day. Lord, they have stepped in representing their family. May every curse be rolled away from their family. Make today a new day for them. And we give you the praise and glory in Jesus' precious name. And let me hear the loudest amen. amen. Now I decree that your stepping in here today opens up a new chapter in your life. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Open your eyes. God bless you. We love you. Look at this direction. Follow that wonderful smiling official. She'll speak to you in just a moment. <laughs> Lift your hands. Now I decree from today, everything after your life or after the life of any member of your family, by the wall of fire erected around you and your household, evil will never strike successfully again. In the name of Jesus, it is done. Bring your hands to your chest. Share the goodness of the Lord. One to go. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Peace. Welcome to 2021, your year of supernatural turnarounds. Then expect turnarounds to become your new identity from henceforth. Amen and amen. God bless you. One voice, take us seven to ten minutes. God bless you as you are going home. Make sure you are dancing, celebrating God. This mystery works. Glory be to our God. Hallelujah. Glory be to our God. Hallelujah. 
glory be to 